Welcome to Two Out of Three Recommend. I'm Lee. And I'm Brett. We're two brothers out of three getting together to chat and recommend drinks, movies, shows and things to keep you busy. Welcome to another episode of Two Out of Three Recommend. We are Two Out of Three Brothers Recommending Stuff. Hello, Brett. Hello, Lee. How are you? Good. Um, well done on remembering the name this week. Yeah. That's yeah, really I good. had a bit of a moment last week, which yeah. if you follow us on the socials at Two Out of Three Brothers, you actually had a Two Out of Three Recommend far out. <laughs> if you follow us on the socials, which are linked in the episode description, there so you I go. don't have to say what they are, Yes, then you will have seen that uh, on the reels. And you should, and you should also join our Facebook group, which is also linked in the episode description. You should do a lot of things. Because That's two things we recommend. Two things we recommend, and I am going to try this drink. What is this drink, Lee? Well, that's a good question, Brett, because I've seen it around. Let me read you what the can says. It's made in Richmond. Okay. Hi, I'm Bobby, the unconventional soft drink, Uh-oh. full of prebiotics and thirst-quenching big flavours, ready to invade your taste buds and make your gut happy. A Containing a premium all-natural prebiotic proven to aid digestion and increase the beneficial bacteria Is growth this in make your me gut poop? for a satisfyingly tasty experience without the guilt. Oh, but I want it's vegan, the guilt. it's gluten-free, and it's non-GMO. It is Melbourne-based. Like Hooroo. Bobby's Drinks in Richmond. Um, so I thought I'd give it a go because I've seen it around. It has 44 calories. It's 90% sugar-free. It's got two grams of prebiotics. Not quite sure what they are. has zero additives, artificial colours and flavours, and it was 100% good times. That's yet to be seen. So It's if- non-alcoholic in case anyone didn't work that out. Right. It doesn't pop as well as the alcoholic cans. God. Cheers. Cheers. Nah. Tastes like LA ice. I was yeah. walking in the city the other day and okay. I saw an empty bottle of Q Cola. Oh. From like Kmart in the 90s. I, yeah. <laughs> or maybe still Kmart. But it was like I was walking down the street, the steps to Parliament Station, and it was just like sitting in the middle of the top step. Parliament Station still looks like the 90s. Parliament Station is not great. It sorely needs a reboot. Um, I have a snack. That's okay. When we're, Bobby it's, Cola. it's all right. Like it's not... It's not Coke. Disgustingly organic. It's not like when someone told me that um, Canotto was basically like nope. Coke, and it is not. I, I partly reason got this because some of my colleagues are judging me for the amount of Coke I drink in a day. Um, and so I thought, I'll try this. It was also on special at 7-Eleven. Okay. It's okay. It's all right. I'll see how my gut feels after. Yeah, I might need to go to the bathroom soon. Might, or might cancel out the pizza I just ordered on menu log. <laughs> Something that's definitely got additives. Yes, good. No prebiotics I in I bought this. some chocolate because I saw it. Great. And based on previous episode, it is Kit Kat Milo. Oh, do you know I had the white Kit Kat Milo I the was other almost going to buy that, yeah. but yeah. I didn't. Um, because this was a thing on um, flybys. If you bought Nestle, you got 60 <laughs> times the flybys points. So the white chocolate Milo was, the white chocolate is very sweet. Uh Uh-huh. And the Milo clashed a little bit. Right, okay. Can I tell you I'm very excited for the Milo McFlurry to return? Ooh. Um, All right, so it's a Kit Kat with Milo in it. Okay, all right. Oh, it's a proper Kit Kat, like, bar. So it's a Kit Kat block. Block is what I've got for people that can't see. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Meh. Tastes Needs like more Kit Milo. Just tastes like a Kit Kat. Oh, no. A little bit of Milo. Tastes like a powdery Kit Kat. Yeah? Yeah. It's not that great. I'll just buy a Kit Kat. Like, there's no malt Milo flavour in it. I'll you know still what, eat it. You know what you should do instead? Kit Kat Better ice Kit cream. Cap, dip it in milk. Dip that in Milo, eat it. Because then the Milo will stick to the Kit Kat. Have an ice cream mm, here we go. with Milo mm-hmm. and a Kit Kat. Right. Hmm. It is not packed with Milo. No. It still has a wafer in there. I think if you took the wafer out and replaced it with Milo. It's just Milo and chocolate. Then it would be packed with Milo. Yeah. No. Cola's fine. Bobby, well done. Cola's fine. 
I'm not gonna- Kit Kat's fine, but I would just buy a Kit Kat. I'm also just going to buy Coke. Yeah. I'm not sure if this has caffeine in it, though. I'll tell you at 2 o'clock in the morning when I realise I can't sleep. No, it doesn't. It doesn't say it has it. And it has to say it if it doesn't. Um, yeah, that's true. You know what it might try next week is the AI cola. Coke, in a flavour invented by AI. Oh, God. Yeah. But let's not. Can I tell you something I watched during the week? Yes, please. American Born Chinese. I feel like I watched the first episode of that. It's on Disney Plus. Yeah, a while ago when it first came out, I watched the first episode. It accidentally stars the same cast as Everything Ever All At Once. Two of the same people. Um, Stephanie Hsu's in it. Oh, I didn't get that far. Yeah, yeah. Um, And um, James Hong's in it. Oh. Stephanie Hsu's in one episode, James Hong's in one episode. Right. As a minor part. But it does have Michelle Yeoh and it does have Kehi Kwan. Um, it's good. Okay. Uh, uh, in doing the research, it's accidentally the same cast. Okay. Like, it's not like Disney went, hang on, Chinese are pretty big at the moment. Well, they went to the same, they were released too close to each other that it wouldn't have been like they saw everything yes. or everywhere all once. Oh, let's get these guys. But also the production of American Born... Chinese happened, it had been a while in the making, as had Everything Everywhere All at Once. And I think the casting of Everything Everywhere All at Once was kind of done in 2020, Mm. a lot of it. Um, But in 2022, Michelle Yeoh, Ben Wang, Yo Yan Yan, Chin Han, Daniel Wu, Kei Kwan, Jim Liu and Cindy Taylor were cast as the mains. Uh, and then Stephanie Hu joined the cast, popularly you, added in June, uh, and Ronnie Cheng, who is a comedian, yeah, uh, were also cast. It's it is a family show, but I quite liked it. Okay, so Jin is an American-born Chinese, uh-huh. and he is in high school. Uh, and he just wants to be a normal, quote, high school kid, not a Chinese high school kid. Okay. So that's his conflict. Right. But then there's also this, like, monkey magic style world where there's stuff. It's called Heaven. It's based on a manga. The whole thing's based on a manga mm. comic booky thing. Um, and so there is a monkey who is a god that comes to Earth to try to find a scroll to help stop the uprising on the Jade Emperor in heaven. Yeah. Uh, And that monkey kid befriends Jin. Okay. And then stuff happens. So the monkey kid's like a god, like Hercules. Yeah, kind of, but younger and a little bit dumber. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, not like Kevin Sorbo. Okay. That's a throwback. The Is he cancelled yet? No. I think he would be. He's still safe. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no, I think he just voted for Trump. Ryan Gosling was in that. Was American Board Her- Chinese? No, it was in Hercules. Oh, right. Or Xena. Yeah, probably both. Yeah. They were pretty much the same show. <laughs> he didn't play Hercules' little <laughs> offsider, but he was... He was in the universe. Maybe he played young. a young Hercules. All right. Anyway... Um, because, of course, you can't scroll through reels without seeing something about Ryan Gosling and Margot Robbie. Do they have a movie? Yeah, they've just earned $1.4 billion. Ridiculous. So, um, yeah, the monkey comes down from heaven to find this fourth scroll. His name is Wei Chen, uh, and he befriends Jin, who reluctantly is friends with the other, the one other Chinese kid. It's very... <gasps> What? Ryan Gosling was in Goosebumps. Really? Yeah. What are you talking about? I think it might have been... Because he's Canadian, Because he's Gosling. Canadian. Yeah. Sorry, continue. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to find... Um, so... He was Hercules... He was... He, oh, so he was somebody called Xylus in Hercules. Yep. But then there was a TV show called Young Hercules, and he was Young Hercules. Okay. So I was right on both ways. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, um, Jin 
it, it's clever because it tells the it's a good kind of family kung fu series. Uh huh. Michelle Yeoh fights. Great. Wei Chen fights. Is she from a god? She's Is a she god. a goddess? Yeah, yeah. The gods and goddesses f- fight. The human people don't. And are they on the real? Are they in the real world? They come to the real world, and the fighting is happening in the real world. Okay, should I just watch it if I have this many questions? Yes. <laughs> but there's wire stuff. Right, right. And I thought at first this kid Wei Chen is the first one we see fight, and I'm like, he's this. The wire work in this show is clunky AF. Oh, okay. Right. But then, like two episodes later, Michelle Yeoh fights. Oh. I'm like, oh no, it's just the kid that plays Wei Chen who she doesn't knows know how to work doing. wires. Yeah. She knows what she's doing. She's the reason that we have wire kung fu in American yeah. uh, cinema and TV. So Michelle Yeoh is great. So it it's a it kind of tells two stories, one of them more thematic than the other, in that American-born Chinese kind of is like, in episode one, Jin is there, and then the principal calls him out of class because there's a Chinese exchange student that's come over and he, she is pairing them up. Okay. And she is like, it's it's awkward. She's like, because you've got so much in common. And Jin's like, do we? Yeah. <laughs> and so there's that kind of thread. She occasionally will call him Jim Wong, in not the Chinese restaurant in, in Footscray. Footscray. She will occasionally yeah. call him Jim Wong instead of Jin Wang. And hmm. then when the parents are called into the principal's office, it's like, oh, I just read this book on cultural discussions. And so there's that kind of like representation Micro. of and acceptance of um Chinese born American American born Chinese and that also is Kei Kwan's story. Kei Kwan plays an actor who in the nineties was in a sitcom in a very badly stereotypical oh, I role. remember that from the one episode I watched, yes. Yeah. And so he has that story which Kei Kwan didn't want to play originally. But then when the producers and the writers told him the full story arc, he was like, yeah, okay, then that's okay. Um, And so there's that thread as well as the monkey magic style mythical Chinese gods and kung fu fighting, not the song. messy. No, it's done very well. Okay. Because it's over eight episodes Mm. uh, and it's done well and it goes just deep enough of both, it doesn't try to tell a deep story about the little bits of racism of American-born Chinese. Right. It just puts them in there. So when you're watching it and she says, oh, I just read this book on having cultural discussions and or when he's, when the principal goes to the mum, I know that uh, in your types of families you can have quite achievement-based expectations on your children. Like, it's not a deep story of like mm. that, but when you hear the mum say that, you're like, oh, my God, that's actually what racism is. Yeah. Um, and so it weaves that quite well into the Kung Fu Have to Save Heaven story with All good right. action, good fighting. Um, Michelle Yeoh actually is hilarious as a goddess who comes down to supervise and look after Wei Chen and so has to play the role of this Chinese auntie in the real world. Okay. She plays that quite well. Yeah. Because she goes from this beautiful goddess to then she's just wearing a T-shirt and tracksuit pants. So she's like this alternate universe kind of thing where she plays someone frumpy and then someone with like hot dogs on her fingers. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. okay. There's no hot dogs on fingers. Okay. All right, because I did watch one episode of it, and then I was just like, meh. I was a little bit reluctant at first because I watched Love, Victor, right, on yeah. Disney+, Plus, and I'm That's like, a That's a bit- oh, another high school thing. Because season right. two of Love, Victor, I just yelled at them for being dumb high schoolers. Yeah. I'm like, why am I watching this? That wasn't a great show. No, season one was good, mm. and I'm glad that there is more mainstream queer characters. Yeah. But the show was a basic high school show. Yeah. Which is kind of also okay. Yeah. Yeah, I of, suppose it's not... We're not the target audience, you know, 30-somethings. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
So, yes, I would recommend American Born Chinese uh-huh. if you liked Everything Ever All at Once because it has a bit of that kind of a bit funny, very family focused story. Uh, and Michelle Yeoh's in it. Right. She's yeah. pretty good. She's very good. I want to watch um, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon again. I did, spoiler alert, uh, there's that a game called Actoral. Oh, yeah. With Michelle Yeoh today. Well, nobody's w- we're recording ahead of... Oh, well, that's true. Yeah. But I was scrolling and I... I so, spoiler which... alert, if you haven't caught up on last week's Actorals, yeah. it's Michelle Yeoh. Which one gave it away for me? Everything, Every All at Once? No. Um, no. Nah. Anyway, it's not important. And it wasn't Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. And it wasn't something... Maybe it was Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I don't know. Something with Ken Watanabe in it. Was it Star Nothing Trek anything? Discovery? Um, Memoirs of a Geisha, The Mummy Tomb Memoirs of, the of a Dragon, Geisha. That's what it was. The Mummy Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. <laughs> Mem- Mem- Memoirs of a Geisha. Okay. That's what gave it away for me. Um, so that's my main recommendation from this week. Okay. Um, speaking of Goosebumps, I hear it's coming back. Well, like not as a Jack Black movie, ugh. but as the TV series. I will never forgive R.L. Stein for signing off on that one. And, um, yeah, so it could be good. And th- speaking of things that are coming up, I have decided um, I'm not Hannah Waddingham's agent. Okay. Uh, but I've decided what she needs to be in. She needs to say yes to things while she's absolutely hot. This thing she needs to say yes to will be huge. Okay. They're doing a Devil Wears Prada musical. Yeah, done. She's in. And I'm pretty sure Elton John's doing the music. Yeah, she needs to be it. So she needs to be Miranda Priestly. Because I watched an episode Mr. of something she- where Mr. Meryl Streep sang and it was fucking shit. Mr. Sheffield, yeah. if you're listening, cast Hannah oh, Waddingham. That was really bad. I had I'm sorry, dream. President Fran Drescher. <laughs> I had a dream the other night. Uh-huh. And your friend Liam, if he's listening, will appreciate this dream. For some reason, I had a dream that I was in an episode of The Nanny. Were you reading up on how she got re-elected as president of SAG? No. Oh. Maybe because she's what been were in the you, news. What were, you in the, what were you in the episode? One of Brighton's friends, maybe? That's I don't random. Know. I actually That's don't very know random. how I got there, but I was in there. But I was also as an adult, so I can't have been one of the friends of the kids. Maybe I was Niles. <laughs> <laughs> you just recast the show and put yourself as Niles. Yeah. I'm not nearly as scathing as Niles. Maybe though. it's your subconscious telling you yourself that you have an issue with the fact that Niles this day would be homosexual. Yep. I Niles just made that up. should have been. A hundred percent should have been, been. homosexual. He could be. No, because he ends up with CC at the end, spoiler alert. Oh, I haven't watched the end. Come oh, on. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody 30-year-old show. It's the 90s for sitcoms. Yeah. Like, can we just talk about that? Sitcoms these days, compared to the 90s, not even close. Speaking of one that we mentioned in a previous episode of Two Drink Cinema, yes, if, if that's lined up, Seinfeld. How I Met Your Father, oh, yes, it is that kind of sitcom writing laugh track thing, yeah, yep. that doesn't work these days. No, and like, so I don't have an issue with the show itself. Hilary Duff's actually pretty good, right? I think she can act. Um. And it's like it's just the type of show that it is with that kind of silly sitcom humor. Yep, that just doesn't work. I also think the episodic shows don't work as well because it, well, it's, it's episodic. nobody. Yeah, yeah. Nobody yeah. is like seven o'clock every Wednesday. I'm going to watch this show anymore. Yes, you have to have a big overarching. But also, I think you have to have feels in there. Yeah. Like, you have to be like Shit's Creek. If I don't cry yeah. in a sitcom now, it's not good enough. 
Okay. Not every episode. Yeah. But there are quite a few episodes of Shit's Creek where I cried. Okay. But but that being said, that silly laugh track humour doesn't work now. I could watch How I Met Your Mother again. Yes. And I, I could I watch probably won't. Seinfeld again. And I could watch The Nanny again. We all know what I will watch. And we've watched The Ab same Fab. episode of RuPaul's Drag Race. I've watched four <laughs> times before. So. We've watched Ab Fab like, that's, again. That's not laugh track, stupid Big Bang Theory kind that's of thing. clever. That's actually clever and real people laughing at them. I with also, them, I guess. I, I'm not... Was How I Met Your Mother laugh track? I, I, don't, I can't remember. I wasn't a huge fan of How I Met Your Mother. They filmed a lot of How I Met Your Father in front of that... Um, LED backdrop that Disney has. Yeah, that's, yep. Which makes me think that's why it's laugh track mm -hmm. because it's not four cameras in a an apartment. Yes. Like how I met your mother would have been and how Seinfeld and friends were. Yeah. And so when it's a huge fake screen that's like in a super tech warehouse, you can't have a studio audience in there as easily. Yeah, so I don't think the multi... I think multi-camera sitcoms are a thing of the past. Yes. But the, you know, so it's all single camera stuff now. Yeah. I... I just don't... Well, like, what sitcoms are out now? Yeah. I, ne also, network television isn't what it used to be. No. And the, a sitcom used to be like an anchor of a network. It depends what you term as a sitcom. Is Ted Lasso a sitcom? Probably, actually, it is. Yeah. Yeah. But again, that's a, like a... It's not an episodic. It's an anthology. Yeah. Um, it's not sitcom as in, like, one episode is a completely different story to the next one. And they yeah. wrap it all. So, yeah. really, the only ones that are, like, sitcoms these days that I can think of are all, like, animated. Yeah. It's not, hey, let's put these five people in a funny situation that yeah. they get out of in 22 yeah. minutes. Yeah. Yeah, that's not what I think people expect from sitcoms at the moment, except for your right animated stuff. Speaking of animated stuff. Yes. Futurama's back. Oh, yeah? One of my favourite lines from, like, I, they're running jokes. One of my favourite lines, and I don't know why it makes me laugh so much, is every time the professor says, well, I am already in my pyjamas. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think what makes it funny is because that's from, like, the first or second episode, and then he wears the same thing for... 12 yeah, years. Yeah. And they go on an adventure and one of his reasons for going on an adventure is that he's already in his pyjamas. Yeah. <laughs> this does make sense. Um, so it, again, is an older type of humour. Yes. So it's basically kind of doing the same jokes that they did 15 years ago, but it just doesn't work. It's just all a bit meh. I think the the nostalgia of bringing future the nostalgia of things coming back is probably what's been like we're going to bring future armor back. Yeah. And it's probably the reason that he's still pushing ahead with the Simpsons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is because the Simpsons now still has some nostalgia of the Simpsons of the 90s. Mm. But I don't think you can make the same show. Mm. Like, you have to realise that the audience that is feeling this nostalgia is not 15 anymore. I also, um, <clears throat> I would love to know how much money it takes to make one episode of The Simpsons. Because if you think yep. it's the same main cast as yep. 35 years ago. Yep. Except for the Yeah, the yeah except for, <laughs> yep. He's still in doing other voices. Yeah. But, like... It's so they would be asking for so much money. Like, how much money is bloody Nancy Cartwright making to oh, do Bart to Simpson? Still be Bart Simpson. Like twenty years ago, she would have been making a shitload of money. Yeah. Now she's probably making even more. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to see. And if, do, do they really make that money back? You know what I would love to see Fox now Disney try to do is to be like, hey Nancy, can we buy the voice of Bart from UAI? Because that's what they're doing with Darth well, Vader. Well, that's Any Darth what Vader the, yeah, that you yeah. hear from now is James L. Jones has signed over the AI rights to create Darth Vader's that's voice. That's part of the reason for people striking. Yes. Um, I mean, yeah. So, she doesn't need the money. Yardley Smith doesn't need the money. She was in City Slickers. <laughs> like, 
Oh, That's all I can thanks name her from. Phil. I'm right. <laughs> um, that was more Marge than um, Lisa, I think. I saw a thing recently that was like, we used AI to create what The Simpsons would look like in real life. And it's terrible. It's, it's they awful. They all look depressed and scary yeah. and British. Yep. I don't, <laughs> it's, I, yeah, I don't get it. Like, I was like, what is wrong with the, these people? And then I think they showed Mo. And I'm like, he looks like he's running an English pub. And that's when I looked at all of them again, and I'm like, these are all English. Yeah. They're all British. It was Chat GPT. Or, or Mid Journey, I Mid-journey. think. Mid Journey. The big um, uh, visual one. Yeah. So Futurama's just a bit meh, really. It's a bit disappointing. Maybe I'll go back and watch the originals. I think that's what I might do. She's made quite a career of herself, um, Peggy from Married with Children. She's done a lot of different stuff. Yeah. Yeah. She's done that. She's done Married with Children, Sons of Anarchy. Actually, sitcoms I'm watching The Good Place. It's not on now, but it's a very good sitcom. But it's uh-huh. also anthological. Yes. But episodic within it. You binge it. Um, I saw a funny TikTok of highlights of... Um, the Good Place. Jamila Jamil. Tahani. Tahani, yes. Um, and it was funny. It was just all things she, like, name-dropped... Um, and it was the funniest, I think the funniest one. She's like, oh. Larry Hemsworth? No. She goes, <laughs> it's like that time. She goes, it's like that time my good friend Taylor Swift was interrupted by my other good friend Kanye West <laughs> yeah. while my best friend Beyonce was watching. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. What I it was love- like, I was like, it's harder than trying to convince my good friend Timothy, Timothy Chalamet to go out in the sun. <laughs> it's very well written, that stuff. Um, so... What I think is quite funny was Larry Hemsworth, right? Because uh-huh. we already forgotten about Luke, but then there's also Larry. <laughs> so Larry, yeah, yeah. But Do you Larry, they were trying to make that joke, but then they were like, "We can't say Luke." Yeah, we can't say Luke. <laughs> but then um, Larry Hemsworth is played by Ben Lawson, the slightly less successful brother of Josh Lawson, <laughs> <laughs> but he is the better looking of the Lawson brothers. Traditionally better looking, yeah. Ben Lawson than Josh Lawson. Yeah. Um, yeah, very good, The Good Place. But speaking of making a career for themselves, like I don't think you could name a more successful sitcom actor than Ted Danson. Yeah. Matt LeBlanc has just Joey. <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah. In terms of doing multiple shows that are being successful. Yeah. Because it's Cheers, Becca. Cheers started in 1982, and yeah. he is still a sitcom headliner in 2023. Yeah, yeah. And there's one, um, there's one where he plays the mayor, and it's called Mister Mayor. Uh, yeah. But it's on Nine now, and it has ads in it, so I haven't watched it. <laughs> but <laughs> okay, he's, he, he he's quite funny in that. And so that's up to 2022. So, like, that's 40 Sin- years. Was he in Spin City? No, that was Brad from... What's his name? Uh, Brad from... Yeah. Rocky Horror. Yeah. yeah. I'll remember his name in a second. So, Cheers, Becca, Brad The Good Place. Place. You had a little bit on CSI. But, like, 40 years of absolute headlining sitcoms. Yeah, you couldn't name anyone uh, is, like that. Is, is that big, big? You can't just go into NBC and ask for Ted Danson money. <laughs> I bet Ted Danson has his own plane. <laughs> Seinfeld reference Seinfeld for those reference. playing along at the, home. The only one close is is Julie Louis Dreyfus. Close yes. to Ted Danson in terms of longevity of TV comedy. Yeah, TV comedy. Yeah, okay. Because in terms of multiple shows, yeah, yes, she had. Um, Julie Louis. She had Julie Louis Dreyfus. She had Elaine. Then she had Old Christine. Yeah. And then she had something else. And then Veep. And now she's in the MCU. Else. I'd put Betty White up there, but she's dead. Yeah. Okay. She did Mary Tyler Moore show. That's true. Then she did Golden Girls, and then she was hot in Cleveland. I know there was probably like a twenty year gap in between, but you know she's had a decent career. But Ted Danson's up there. Yeah. Yeah, she's also been in um, bits of Curb Your Enthusiasm. There was yeah. another show called Watching Ellie, but that only ran for one year. 
So Seinfeld, you know, nine years. The New Adventures of Old Christine, four years. Veep, three years, four she years. She won an Emmy for all of them. Yeah. So she's up there with... Alpha um, Jenny. Oh, no, she's more movies now. Yeah. So... You know who's successful? Have I talked about this before? Julie Louis Dreyfus is also loaded. Of course she is. You know who's successful but never really that successful but's been working for a long period of time but isn't really the main thing in anything? Who? That, that's that great? I don't know if I've said this before. Rob Lowe. Yeah. You know, like he's been working yeah, number non-stop. Is, number two. The yeah. whole way through. He's been working <laughs> non-stop for like 40-something yep. years. Yep. But like... He's not like, oh, he's a great actor. You don't think of Rob Lowe as a great actor. Yeah, no. But he does things that where he's either in something good, but he's not the main one, or he's in 911 Lone Star, and it's just kind of average. Yeah. So right back to like The Outsiders. Yeah. In the 80s, Parks and Rec, great. West Wing, great. Totally different. Yeah, West Wing, but he's not like. Like, that's a great show, but you're not like, oh, that Rob Lowe show, West Wing. When you go West Wing, you go Martin Sheen, and then there's a few things, and then there's Rob Lowe. And 911 Lone Star is just, yeah, an average show. Well, it's good to look at. Yeah. It's very, this is going to sound bad. Aesthetically pleasing. It's very woke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Like, gay, trans, Muslim, Hispanic. I did Everything. see. A, I did see a scene on my TikTok the other day. Yeah. where they this woman called nine one one because her next door neighbours were having a party. Yes, I saw that. And they're Hispanic. Yeah. yeah. And so the Hispanic neighbours like, well, she's racist. Uh huh. And she's like, I'm not racist. They just have these parties. Yeah. And then he pretends to arrest her, and then she fakes a heart attack. Mm hmm. And so he gets his Hispanic. Woman firefighter. She's yeah. like, not, not, not her. her. Yeah, yeah. Then the the, the, the gay the black one. Guy, yeah. Not her. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the black one's okay, but then the black one goes, but I'm trans. And, oh, oh, arrest yeah, yeah. me, arrest me. I'm not having a heart attack. Um, so it is woke. It is woke, but that's not what they're all about. It's just very American. When oh, it's set in Texas, yeah. Can I say though, Suits Lady is in it now. We went, we, Suits is the number one streamed show of Netflix history. Suits got real bad. Yeah, but (laughs) for some reason, it was the top watch. It has been the top watch show for like the last four months on Netflix. I don't know what brought it back. Um, TikTok. Meghan Markle? She hasn't done anything though. No, but she's around, so people are more aware of it. What, Nobody she, else has done anything from it, though. Since Spotify didn't renew Meghan Markle's podcast contract, people are like, well, we better watch Suits again. Yeah, so she gets <laughs> one cent every episode. <laughs> Barely that. She's not even in every she episode. She doesn't need the money. Well, maybe they do, because oh, she's not off. a princess. They don't need the fucking money. Speaking of not needing money, she's I said, a duchess. I said Julia Louis-Dreyfus is rich, and you were like, yeah, of course. She's not rich from TV. Do you not mm. know she is family rich? Yeah, she's Richard Dreyfus's niece. No, no. <laughs> the Louis Dreyfus company, mm. right, was started by her grandfather. Her father, before he died, from the Louis Dreyfus company, was worth almost four billion dollars. Oh, God. So she's not loaded from Seinfeld because everyone knows Jerry got all the money. Yeah, she's loaded from being a Louis Dreyfus, and that's why Jerry hasn't done anything since. Except comedians in cars getting coffee. He's he's like the richest TV person ever. Yeah. Or maybe Oprah. Um, you know what? I have a recommendation. Speaking of comedians. Oh, please. I actually also, just while we're on the topic of Julia Louis-Dreyfus, her thing when she accepted that Mark Twain Award for American Humour. Oh, yeah, still definitely hilarious go and watch that. Apparently, Julia Louis-Dreyfus um, is worth $250 million. Oh. Just not as much. Mm. When when Dad Jerry's dies. like a billion, yeah, yeah. Um, Michael Richards, not so much. Jerry Seinfeld's net worth apparently is estimated to, no, according to Celebrity Net Worth, Jerry has nine hundred and fifty million dollars in the bank. I don't know how they got that, I, but that's just from B movie. Also, <laughs> I also don't know. If you had $950 million, 
It's not in an account yeah, in the bank. It's just in my Commonwealth Bank account. <laughs> yeah. Just in my everyday saver account. There's yeah. $950 yeah, 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 million yeah. Dollars in it. It's in... It's liquid. It's in things and assets. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no one's got millions and millions of dollars just in an account. Not even Elon Musk. No. And if it's in an account, it's not an American one. <laughs> um, All right. What are you recommending? Last week, I went to a comedian show. Oh, I like comedians. Um the comedian, the headliner was Matteo Lane. Oh, yeah. Who is American and hilarious and gay and yep. is just basically. The, we're, it was, we're, at, we're at the Palais in St. Kilda. Great venue. I don't think I've ever been in a room with so many gay people in it before <laughs> in my life. Um, I went to a Kylie concert. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was. It was very funny. He's very funny. Um, and I worked out partway through what I like about his humour is that he tells stories and stuff. Yeah. But the way he tells them, it just tells them like he's like you're his friend and he's just you're catching up. Oh, yeah. Because at one point like he's, he's like. spilling the tea. Ta- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> it was one place I've he was. got all the gay terms. Talk- <laughs> God. <laughs> Jesus. Um, he was talking and he was just like. Oh, um, and telling one story, and then he goes, "Oh my god, I can't believe I didn't even tell you about this." <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "When I was in Italy, blah 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 blah." Um, so yeah, it's very funny. And then the kind of MC first part of the opening act was Reese Nicholson. Yeah, I like him now. I had I realized I'd never seen Reese Nicholson do stand up. You just seen him host. I've seen on him the on drag like race. on yeah that or like the project or yep. you know Spicks yep. and specs or whatever. Just being on a show, not doing his own stand up yes. kind of thing. Yep. Very funny. Yeah. But then what they did? Mm. They had flamboyant homosexual yep. open. They had flamboyant homosexual Headline. main headliner. Heterosexual in the middle. Night mate. This humour is not working. I cannot relate to you. You're straight. You're, you're, you're straight and sober. I can't relate to any of your stories. No. I'm like, he was kind of he had some some funny Who things. Who was it? Name. Oh, I can't even remember. Oh god. It was like Evan Williams or something, and I think he was just like Matteo Lane's friend. Oh, okay. Who is probably like an upcoming comedian and has yep. been doing this like tour with him. Oh, okay, right. Mm. Um. But yeah, it was it was um, very funny, but it was just like not the same kind of humor and was a bit of a lull. Well, you gotta go to the bar. <laughs> no, nobody <laughs> went to the bar. He wasn't. He didn't do speak for that long. It's probably like fifteen, twenty minutes. Oh, okay, right. Um, yeah. So it was just my recommendation is just plan your night a bit better. Um, <laughs> one, there was some bitchy gay behind <laughs> behind us that was just like. Because he was very, he was quite a good-looking person. Um, he goes, Ugh, he'd be more entertaining if he took his shirt off. <laughs> well, on the poster, he You're basically right? had his shirt off. No, not Matteo Lane, the friend. Oh, okay, right. Um, <laughs> You're in row N of the stores of the Palais. Yeah. Like, what are you seeing? <laughs> yeah. And then I realised it's the first thing I've been to the Palais. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I'm glad it wasn't a, f- a hot day because it was quite warm in there and it was a day oh, where it was yeah, like 12 yeah. degrees outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it almost doesn't exist anymore, the Palais. Mm, Got it saved. is in a weird spot. Yeah. And it's odd that it doesn't face the beach. Mm-hmm. But it, there's no, I guess, good way to face it. Yeah, because you're otherwise inside. you're driving the Esplanade, you see the back. You're driving yeah. up Fitzroy Street, you see the back. Which one do you go? Yeah. So, yeah, Matteo Lane, very funny. He... He comes up on my TikTok and Instagrams all the time. Yep. Okay. It's very funny. I'm going to go and see some comedy this week, I think. Yeah. I don't know where. Just like Comics Lounge. Just rock up and see who's on. Just see who's on. That yeah. guy. Gab. Gab Rossi. He'll Gab be there Rossi. forever. He'll be buried in the joint. <laughs> all right. Thanks for listening to another episode of Two Out of Three Recommend for this week. If you would like to watch a movie, you can watch School of Rock. Because it is coming up on the Two Drink Cinema as the next review. If you want to listen to Two Drink Cinema, then the episode for that is in the the link for that is in the episode description. Let me the link to our socials and our Facebook group. Thanks, Brett. Thanks, Lee. 
Thanks for listening to Two Out of Three Recommend. We would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast was produced and pay our respects to Elders past and present. If you'd like to support the podcast and become a member, gaining early access to episodes and an exclusive episode each month, sign up as a member using the link in the show notes. If there's something you'd like to recommend to us, get in touch on the socials or in our Facebook group. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast on your podcast app or on YouTube. Leave us a rating and review and tell your friends.